welcome to this video. And in my previous video, I introduced the concept of describing functions as it relates to nonlinear systems. And we noted that the describing function is a frequency domain method of analyzing or predicting the behavior of nonlinear systems. We're able to look at how you'd establish the describing function for a two position relay. And this, in this video, then I would pick up saturation as our nonlinearity, and we proceed to determine its non describing function. So we take up saturation as our nonlinearity, and we proceed to determine its describing function. Saturation can be described as follows. If this is our input and our output, initially there exists a linear relationship between the input and output up to a certain point of the input where the output remains constant regardless of the increase in input. And this can be taken to be a line with a gradient K a line with a gradient k. And if this point is s along the input, and this is negative s, that means the magnitude will be ks. And at this point, the magnitude will be negative ks. So this is our nonlinearity saturation. The output bears a linear relationship with the input up to a certain point when it remains constant. And as we said, this is a nonlinearity that is exhibited mostly by amplifier systems. Let's proceed to determine the describing function of this nonlinearity. So we draw the nonlinearity as usual. The nonlinearity as follows. So a linear relationship and then remains constant. So this is Ks and this is negative Ks. This is S and this is negative S. This is our input and our output. Next, we draw the sinusoid, as we explained earlier, the process of coming up with a describing function. We draw the sinusoid. So if this is our sinusoid, let's make this straight. If this is our sinusoid, Okay. <clears throat> For our sinusoid, we need to draw a line of negative 45 degrees from this point. And then we pick up all the points. So I'll first need to move this axis up here. So this can be extended as our new axis our axis now of omega t and our function as a function of omega t, the output. So the nonlinearity will be chopped at this point. The sinusoid will be chopped at this point. And also on this other side, we have the nonlinearity chopping the sinusoid. So we need to pick the following points as well. So we need to pick this point and we can call this angle theta one. Then we need this angle. This is theta two. We also need this angle.
which is theta three and this angle. which is theta four. So we take those points up. So there is this point. There is this point. This point. And this is this point. Then we also need the Pi, so I'll need to take this point, which is our pi. Then I also need the two pi. This point, so we pick up also this point. So we can label them up here as theta one. This is theta two. This is pi. This is theta three, theta four, and two pi. Then we need this magnitude as well. So this magnitude and this magnitude from the negative half cycle. So from zero to theta one, we notice that both signals are increasing and therefore a linear relationship exists. But from theta one to theta two, the signal remains constant. Then starts decreasing at this point all the way up to theta three. So there is that sudden fall, then remains constant up to theta four, and then starts increasing up to two pi. And this becomes the periodic signal, which is a description of our nonlinearity saturation. Next, we need to determine the describing function from the periodic function. Remember, we need to determine n of omega t as a1 cosine omega t plus b1 sine omega t. Since we said we are taking odd symmetry, our a0 is equal to 0. And we notice that our signal, if we are to integrate from zero to two pi, is the same as integrating from zero to pi and multiplying by two, because the area from zero to pi is the same area as from pi to two pi. Similarly, if you were to get symmetry, or we were to integrate up to pi over two, so if this is our point pi over two, then this region from zero to pi over two is the, 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 the area below the curve is the same as the area from pi over two to pi. That means again, we can integrate from zero to pi over two, but then we'll have to multiply our integral by four because it's a quarter of the total area from zero to two pi. We can proceed then to determine our function as follows. Now from zero to theta one, from zero to theta one, we notice then our signal is km of t. That is our n of t, which can be written as km, the sign of omega t from zero to theta one. Then from theta one to pi over two, it's a constant at ks. Okay. From theta one to pi over two, this region is a constant, which is ks. And therefore we will be integrating the signal 
whose value is km sine omega t from zero to theta one and ks from theta one to pi over two. We proceed to determine our values as follows. And again, for odd symmetry, we've noted, we also noted that for odd symmetry, A1 is equals to zero when we evaluated the integral for the two position relay network. And therefore we'll proceed to determine our constant B1. By definition, by definition, B1 is defined as two over T, the integral from zero to T of N of T, the sign of omega n omega t so that's the sign of omega t d of omega t sin n is one which can be written as initially the integral from two to two over pi the integral from zero to two pi of n of t the sign of omega t d of omega t and we say it is the same as getting four times the integral from zero to pi over two, which you can write as four over pi, the integral from zero to pi over two, n of t, the sine of omega t, d of omega t. This integral can be written as four over pi, the integral from zero to theta one first of the signal, from zero to theta one, the signal n of t is km, the sine of omega t, and then we multiply this by sine omega t, d of omega t, plus the integral four over pi, the integral from theta one to pi over two, the signal is ks multiplied by the sine of omega t, d of omega t which we can proceed to write as follows. So it will be four km over pi, the integral from zero to theta one of the sine squared of omega t, d of omega t plus four ks over pi, the integral from theta one to pi over two, so this is theta one pi over two of the sine omega t d of omega t sine squared function can be written in terms of the cosine function as a double angle as follows so this is the same as four over km over pi the integral from zero to theta one of one minus cos two omega t over two d omega t plus four ks over pi, the integral from theta one to pi over two, the sine of omega t, d of omega t, which will be equal to, so this gives us two km over pi, and you multiply out by a half into, we integrate one with respect to d omega t to get omega t, and then minus the integral of cosine is sine, so this becomes a half sine two omega t, and the limits are from zero to theta one plus four ks over pi. We integrate this to get the negative of cos omega t theta one to pi over two which will proceed to get us two km over pi into, so when omega t is theta one, we get theta one minus a half sine two theta one, sine two theta one. When omega t is zero, this will be zero. When omega t is zero, the sine part will also be equal to zero, so we get that part plus, 4 ks over pi into the cosine of pi over two is zero. So we'll have minus zero minus minus. So that means plus the cosine of theta one. So our function can now be written as 
two km over pi, two km over pi into theta one minus a half the sine of two theta one plus four ks over pi the cosine of theta one which we can write you can break this into parts as follows you can write these as four km over pi or you can write this as two km over pi beta one minus km over pi the sine of two beta one plus four ks over pi the cosine of beta one and then we evaluate the following at beta one at theta one, the signal can be defined as follows. Take you back to the signal. At exactly theta one, the function can be defined by ks. And then for the signal defined by km, sine omega t can also be written as km sine theta one is equals to ks. We can write the following. At theta one, we can write ks is the same as km sine theta one. And we notice that sine theta one will be equal to s over m and theta one will be the sine inverse of S over M. <clears throat> okay, sine theta one will be S over M and theta one will be S inverse sine inverse S over M. At the same time, if you have a right angled triangle, if this is theta one and the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so S over M is the sine of theta one. We notice that this is going to be M squared minus S squared square root, such that the cosine of theta one can be written as M squared minus S squared square root divided by M, which is the same as the square root of one minus S over M squared. If you have to put all the terms under the square root, and this is the cosine of theta one. So we have the cosine of theta one. We have theta one in terms of the sine inverse of S over M, which we can replace into our describing R uh, or our function N of T. Our function N of T can now be written as, if we factor out in both cases four over pi, we'll have this, as km over two, theta one will be sine inverse s over m minus two km over four, we multiply by, then we have sine two theta one, we can break it down into two parts, into the sine and cosine part, as s over m and then the square root of one minus s over m squared plus then the other term was ks and then the cosine of theta one it was four ks over pi cosine of theta one the cosine of theta one is the square root of one minus s over m squared square root like that, which you can write as four over pi into km over two sine inverse s over m minus, then you notice that this will be a half 
mm will cancel out. This will be a half ks plus ks, that will give us a half, plus ks over two, the square root of one minus s over m squared, which you can proceed to write as, we can factor out km outside and write this as two km over pi because of these two into the sine inverse of s over m this term plus k is outside then we'll have this as s over m because we have introduced m here so k over m s over m and then the square root of one minus s over m squared and this is our signal n of t which is our output the describing function as we said is going to be given by n at an angle of zero divided by m at an angle of zero which will be equal to so it's this function we divide by m and the m's will cancel out to get 2k over pi the sine inverse of s over m plus s over m the square root of one minus s over m squared and this becomes the describing function for our nonlinearity saturation this is our describing function which we said is a function n of m and omega which is obtained or given in this expression and that is my end of my presentation where we've been able to determine the describing function of the saturation nonlinearity. thank you for watching this video <laughs>